Hello, everyone. This is Latif. Are you coming today with another scripture from the Lord? We are in Romans chapter 6, verse 13, as well as Philippians chapter 4, verse 3. Let's go ahead and pray. We can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this beautiful word. Lord God, help it to encourage us and give us a spark of light today. Lord God, help it to motivate us to want to be like some of these people in your word and be like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's get started. Romans chapter 6, verse 13. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. And so this is um, Paul speaking about, you know, uh, the way that we should present ourselves to the Lord. And, and this is a humble way, right? This is not a, a haughty or a prideful way. We have been saved from sin and death. So we are grateful. It says, do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness. We're not working for sin. We're not slaves to sin anymore. We are instruments of, of righteousness, not unrighteousness. When we were living in the world and we hadn't accepted Christ into our heart, um, our bodies were tools, right? Tools for sin to use. We, we willingly presented ourselves to sin and, and when we were used in, in, in such ways. And so it says, but present yourself to God. So now we are, we, we, we are no longer presenting ourselves to sin to be used. We're presenting ourselves to our maker. It says, present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. But present, yeah, but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life. So God has snatched us away from death, right? And and the penalty of sin um, for presenting our bodies as instruments of unrighteousness. And so he's he snatched us away from that and he snatched us from death, death, the penalty of death for our sins into life, right? He is life and he has given us a beautiful way in that. And it says, and your members to God as instruments of righteousness, meaning not just instruments as, oh, we're going to do good things, you know, but we are to be used of the Lord. We should be instruments of righteousness. When people look at us, they should be able to say there's something different about that person, right? Because they are being used as an instrument of righteousness. They are being used as the word of God in the world. Why? Because they abide in Christ and Christ is the word. So you are, you are living Living, you are a living epistle, like you are a living open book for people to see. And it says, and your members to God as instruments of righteousness. Let me read it all together. Romans 6, verse 13, do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God to God as instrument of righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. All right. And so Philippians 4, chap, chapter 4, verse 3 says, yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life and that is so beautiful because he's talking about those who have put their hand to the plow and not looked back he's talking about true companions he says yes i ask you also true companions help these women so there are a group of women not only is he talking to workers the Philippians, remember the um the the church of philippi is one of the only churches um, it is the only church who was spared the test, right? They were the ones who 
um, God had approved of. And the only warning he gave was for no one to steal their crown. So um, he's talking to the church of Philippi and, and he's talking about their, their people. And he's saying, hey, help these women. These women were laborers, right? They would labor side by side with him in the gospel together, right? They, he, he felt them. He, he knew um, how they were. And he says, um, labor side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers. So his sidekick, Clement, and the rest of his fellow workers, those people who are working along with them, he's saying, take care of these people, right? Make sure they're well taken care of. Keep watch over them. Why? Because these are companions these are people who work these are people who have presented their bodies as meds as tools of righteousness what does it say um but present yourselves to god as those who have been brought from death to life these people have been brought from death to life and their members and your members to god as instruments of righteousness they're using their bodies as instruments of righteousness right not presenting them to sin but presenting them for the work of the lord they are servants of god and he is just saying here you know remember them think on them because they are true labor true companions um laboring for the gospel side by side with him and so it says whose names are in the book of life Oh, Lord Jesus, let our name be in the Lamb's book of life. And and God is with us. He, He is approving of us. He is loving us. And he's wanting us to present our members, present our members as instruments of righteousness in this day and age of laboring. You, you need to be out there working, even if you're not um, able to get up, do something for the Lord ask him what to do and he is going to show you he is a faithful god he is faithful and just and he is going to show you amen how to labor how to live for him all right let's go ahead and pray father god thank you for this word thank you for motivation to keep pressing on and pressing in in your word and pressing on and in in this journey lord god We ask you, Jesus, to help us to remember these people, these women who labored side by side, Clement, as well as other people who were there, who are all laboring, God, for your service. Happy to be one of those who are presenting their bodies and presenting their members as instruments of righteousness. Help us to be like them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God. Jesus, sit on the throne of my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. All right, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.